Are you struggling to conceive? You have options, and at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group, we'll make sure you have the guidance and support you need. Preg is known for individualized fertility care that's unique to every patient. We take the time to provide a reassuring and empowering experience because we believe that you deserve nothing less. Let us help you on your journey to parenthood. Visit us at pregonline.com to learn more. Get the guidance and support you need at Piedmont Reproductive Endocrinology Group. Are you ready for a rewarding career in the electrical industry? Quality Electric of the Coastal Carolinas, QECC, is looking for qualified electricians and electrical helpers to join its Charleston team. QECC offers guaranteed full-time hours, make up to $30 per hour with possible performance bonuses and career growth opportunities. Enjoy benefits like health insurance, dental and vision coverage, 401k plans, and more. If you're a motivated, experienced electrician, this job is for you. QECC is an equal opportunity employer. For all job inquiries, send email to hr at qeccinc.com. Yeah, so go back to you plotting my death. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, me and your kids uh, and your wife uh, were at, even you know, some of your parent. I won't tell you which parent. One parent's in, and one parent's oh, it's out. My but it's my mom. Okay, well, we're, <laughs> we're, it's all the women in your life, oddly enough. Uh, we're planning your demise. Uh, they're actually a little frustrated. The plan has not come along. Of uh, it's not coming along very fast. They're they're worried that I'm losing focus. Well, you moved and, to, you moved to Texas in the process. Right, right, right. I was supposed to kill you when I lured you out here for a visit. And we actually just had a fun time, like doing podcast and pool and other stuff that I totally forgot to kill you. Um, I missed. I'm lucky I didn't get killed when I was there, I guess. So I told them instead, my plan is, is not to murder you in cold blood, but slowly let you eat yourself away from the inside from bad health choices and inner health problems that will slowly take you down and i said my plan will take like 30 years but it's eventually going to work it's it's working i think we're about 15 years into it now so yeah right <laughs> <laughs> i feel like shit every day and uh <laughs> my goodness. and um, i need more and more pills to make the other pills work yes there you go it's now just a symphony of pills for me also symphony i was gonna say a plethora I know I'm getting old. A good sign that I know I'm getting old is when I announced to my wife last week that I think I need one of those pill organizers. The one that says Sunday, Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, like Sunday, Monday, like I'm past the point where I'm like, yeah, yeah. I take one pill every once in a while. I just got to remember to take it. Now I'm like, wait a minute. Do I take this on Wednesday? No, wait, it oh, it's a Thursday it pill. Wait. Oh no. I took it this morning, but do I take it at night? It, like, yeah. I'm like, Hey, I think I need one of those pill organizers. And she's like, well, you know what that means? I'm like, Oh yes, I do. Uh, you know what's funny is Evelyn went out and bought two of those a couple of years back because, uh, because she was on like some diet pills and I was on something, I was on all my garbage. And, uh, she's like, I'm like, I'm not using that. I'm not, I'm not, that's, that's not happening. I, I take my pills when I take my pills. Now I live and die by that thing. <laughs> right. Like it's, it, isn't it funny how low tech it is, but yet it's it like it's such an important little thing in your life. Yes, uh, the pill organizer. So it makes it easy for you to just not have to worry about it more than once a week when you yeah, fill them true. up. Yeah, that's true. I mean, but uh, but yeah, it makes you feel old because then you have to take all those pills, and then none of them are for the penis, which sucks. Because uh, right, I'm not they're all I'm for not, like other organs. I'm not at the penis pill uh, uh, time yet. I think I'm still young for that. But I will tell you, I think it's got to be happening more and more to guys. I think. It's just we have a lower testosterone now because I see commercials now nonstop for boosting your testosterone. Oh, yeah. And that that was not a problem 20 years ago. And all of a sudden it is. And I think uh, you no, know what it was, been, right? What? We let women vote. I think it's that. And I also think it's Mountain Dew. My theory <laughs> is it's it's Mountain Dew and and Sunny Delight and uh, Taco Bell. I and think mac and cheese. Yeah, I, I think it's like, <laughs> think about the abomination that is all the weird shit that Taco Bell invents uh, and all the like 97 flavors of Mountain Dew. My theory is it's something in there is killing men's testosterone levels. What, do you still drink Mountain Dew? I do not because I want to keep uh, little Eric running strong, like well, the strong steam engine, the mighty bullet train that it is. Bullet. As in singular, maybe yes, ever, except for it's a, <laughs> except for the bullet is a twenty-two. <laughs> it's a yeah, small, it's actually, small caliber, small caliber, a pellet. Bullet. A pellet. Uh, no, no, <laughs> a BB gun. I want to keep this BB gun going strong. No, I, I agree with you, but uh, uh, I, I stopped drinking soda when I was in like high school. I like unless there's booze in it, of course. I mean, that's an obvious. Of fact. course, yes, but yeah, obviously. I know. Uh, so I, I don't know if it's the 
two gal, two, no, the two liters. Yeah. Two liter bottles that I used to drink in high school before I quit. Mm. <laughs> Did you drink the one liters? Oh my gosh. Yes. I, I am almost blown away by my soda consumption throughout high school. And even really into like where I turned 30, like I drank a lot of soda, then I cut way back and now I'm just drinking everything zero Cal, right? Like I drink the Coke yeah. zero or something now, but like, even then, like, oh my gosh, I was like, holy crap. I was drinking like a two liter plus maybe a couple of cans a day. That's gnarly, dude. Yeah. Now, wonder you're so round. Yeah, I know. I'm the round, <laughs> the round mound of pound, uh, as wow. my wife calls you. me. Yeah, um, that's what yeah. she does. That's what she calls <laughs> Not what she calls you when she's talking to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like that loser is typically yeah. what it follows. His bullet train is a <laughs> the bead has, train. Has gone off the rails. Uh, <laughs> Wait, so, this is, you could be better at this. You know that, right? Oh, yes. Uh, everyone can tell because of how not better at this we are. Um, so uh, you have relatives visit all the time. Uh, we do not. So, you know, obviously we moved to Texas. You don't get as many visitors. Uh, by the way, that was kind of part of the design. Well, um, but you moved away. You also lived with your near your family your entire life until you moved to Texas, where this is correct. I lived with them until I moved down here and they all stayed. Yeah, that, good point. Good point. But you you get you get them to visit. It seems like where you go up there and visit quite often. Um, so I, I have a few questions for you. So we just had uh, uh, Monique's in-laws come visit uh, for uh, like eight days, which- Wow, ice didn't get them? Uh, way too long. It was way too long. No, the heat did because it's been uh, about 103 every day. It's been really hot. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about the, Border Patrol. Oh, the oh no! <laughs> I, thought about, like, I thought you were making fun of how like you know the ice the ice storm killed them. No, right? I was talking about Border Patrol. Oh yeah, that's right. Because they're Mexican. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a Mexican joke, everybody. Uh, uh, no, so first question, first question, because okay. I'm still new to this relatives visiting, me visiting relatives things, because your point's exactly, perfect. It's, I, I literally have always lived next to them, so yeah. I didn't have to worry about these. Visits. So, okay, do you prefer to have them visit and be on, and kind of invade your turf, or would you rather be visiting them and be the ones invading their turf? That's the first question I wanted to ask you. Well, it it, it kind of depends on the amount of people, but... Um, I would say, uh, depend, God, it depends on where they're from too, but my family's mostly from Washington, so I'm going to assume it's from there because that's what I know. Mm -hmm. um, I would rather uh, be on their turf because there's a lot less to worry about. Well, okay, see, and, and obviously, so I was kind of like in my mind making like the pros and cons list, right? Like if, if they come to you, you have the benefit of like your, you know, it's your toilet to go poop in, it's your shower, you can walk into your bedroom yeah. and close the door. I mean, there's a lot of pros there, right? You're on your mm -hmm. home turf. But then again, the cons, you're on your home turf. So they're, they're the invaders, right? Like they're the ones who well, you got to cook, you got to clean, you got to buy more toilet paper. You got to make right, sure. Right. Plug. And, you gotta, and you it, drives, their kids. it drives me out. So, so what we had is we had a uh, Monique's mom, Michelle, uh, and she decided, which was great. I actually did not mind her being here for eight days. I was totally fine with that. It's that she brought the little cousins with her. Thinking See, that's that, where it gets difficult. Oh my gosh. So we spent the entire time catering to them and their needs and, you know, that's where the downfall was. But also, it's like, I listen, I walk around the house. I'm sure you do. I'm always turning off the lights. Oh, you guys left the fan on in this room. No one's been in this room <laughs> for three hours. I'm turning it off, right? But it's one thing when it's my kids. But, like, when it's someone else that's invaded your house and, like, they're just, like, I walked by the, the guest bathroom and the water was running. <laughs> They walked out of the bathroom with the water and running and just didn't turn off the faucet. Like they, like it was a like it was a public restroom that has the spring loaded one that's gonna automatically turn it off for them. And I'm I'm thinking to myself, how long has it been since they've been in the bathroom? Like, it, did this just happen and it's been running for five and a half seconds, or has it been running for fifteen minutes? Like, I have no idea. You're gonna find uh, out on your bill. Oh, I sure will. Uh, <laughs> but just just stuff like that. So like, like when they invade your home territory, it, that's the the pro and the con is that you're on your home turf, right? Because yeah. they're both. But when you go visit someone else, the downside is you're kind of on their schedule and their terms. Have you ever visited with a family member, friend, where like, uh, their their like their schedule is different than yours, or maybe not their schedule, but like they they eat dinner at 10 o'clock and you're like uh, hungry at six and you're like God, I'm, <laughs> I'm freaking starving when do you guys eat dinner oh we eat dinner at 10 o'clock like we're vampires or whatever like i would say like different different types of culture in a sense different areas uh no i mean yes and no i guess um 
I, I, I usually, I usually ignore my family when we go hang out. <laughs> <laughs> I did have a f- couple beers and I make them watch Marvel movies. I'm not kidding. That's all I do when I go to my sister's house. Oh my but, God. Um, but yeah, no, the, the worst part is when they come to your house and they eat all your food. Yes. And then, and, yes. and you're like, man, I was saving that burrito for like a rainy day, but mother effer heated it up last night at two in the morning, like a jackass. Cause he was drinking all my booze. Yep. Yep. That's the worst part. That is Other the worst part. That, oh, or, or like uh, trying to plan to go out to dinner somewhere. Oh, God. Right? Like, listen, okay, listen, when you came over, it was easy because, you know, you're an adult, you're with us. We're like, hey, Chris, we're going out for a barbecue. You're like, I'm down. Let's do this, right? Mm-hmm. But if you brought your entire, all your kids and everything, now it's like, oh, well, so-and-so doesn't eat meat. And this other person is like not in the mood for Chinese food. And this, yes. like, it now complicates things, especially when it's children involved right yeah now my kids are not that picky which is great but when i have some of my nieces or nephews around like i got into an argument with my nephew because he wouldn't use a fork over a spoon <laughs> and then he well, went spoons and got only belo- spoons are only to be used when it's soup or it's cereal pretty much oh, every he- other instance a fork is the superior object but he called it a dingle hopper. So I really, That's, really had, he had no let uh, to stand on. Well, he recently watched Little Mermaid. <laughs> but no, it's like, that's the worst part is, is um, some of my uh, family that's children. They're like my sister, her niece, actually one of my youngest ones, she doesn't eat a whole lot. So like, she'll take the food to the restaurant with her and then feed her. And then everybody else orders. <laughs> Jeez. The problem that we had is that the, the girl that they brought, who's the same age as my youngest daughter. Um, so she's like, let's just oh, call yeah. 10 or 11 uh, uh-huh. around that age. Yep. Uh, she is a handful. And she, I mean, like a handful and was just a real pain in the ass. And so that was one of those ones that as soon as she was gone, Audrey and I were like, felt like celebrating like we were like guys we're going out to dinner and you know we were like we're going drinking yeah and then (laughs) it's like why are you guys so pumped i'm like the house is ours again it's ours yeah Yeah, that's the best feeling when everybody's gone you sit down you're like hell yeah you hear that nothing we booked this thing out on the lake (laughs) that wasn't cheap and it was really cool they had set up this obstacle course that looks like it's from the show wipeout oh dope yeah, super dope. It was really awesome. They set up this course and it was very limited tickets available. And we were like, guys, we have a fun thing for you to do while you're here. Because the, the guy, the boy who came was kind of close to Audrey's age. The girl was close to Josephine's age. And we said, we bought this thing. It's like wipe out, but it's on the, it's on the lake. It's right by here. It was super fun. And we, we buy the tickets and everyone's all pumped about it. And yeah. we get there and the youngest one's just in a shitty mood and doesn't want to do it. And like kind of complaining, like, this is stupid. And why are we here? And I'm like, uh, they only sold like 50 tickets to this thing. Like, like we got a pretty exclusive thing and it wasn't cheap. Like, sh- you, you know, like, can it, you right? imagine, can you imagine being 10 or 11 and like being anti fun that much? Like, uh, dude, I was so bored when I was a kid. Like if you just said, Hey, we're going to, uh, they, they, you know, we're going to go to a taping of Oprah Winfrey. I would have been like, yeah, screw it. Let's go. I just need something to do, you know? Yeah, no, I mean, we didn't have shit to do when we were younger. What, like, okay, go outside and dig a hole, or we're going to go to that fair in the parking lot over there, right. or we're going to go to the circus, Vargas over in that parking lot over there. But you were down you know? for whatever, right? Because you're yeah. like, uh, I'm, I'm 12, I'm bored, and I just want to do shit that's not like, you know, but... So they, we, she, they had already issued the wristbands. And so uh, I didn't buy it for myself. I just bought it for the kids. Well, it's because you're crippled. No, no. Well, <laughs> yeah. well, keep in mind, I'd also recently had my tooth, my mouth surgery. Yeah. So well, I was kind doing of that also, thing. You wouldn't have a problem with your mouth. Well, I needed to clear some teeth out because it's better for me professionally. Yeah, I know. Yeah, guys really like it when you can gum them. Um, Anyways, so I, everyone already had their wristbands issued and all that, and they're about to go. And it was like to the point where, by the way, she waits to do to pull this crap to when they're like calling everyone out to the stage to go do it. Okay. Like all right the then. hours leading up, the days leading up, no objection, no objection, no issue, no problem. Uh, well, tons of other problems because she's an idiot, but like no <laughs> problems on this day of this one thing. And then literally moments while they're literally calling everyone out, giving them the safety instructions and all that as they're about to go on. They go, she she pitches the fit, not doing it, not doing it. And I go, okay, I don't like things going to waste. And I go up to the I go up to the people organizing the event and I say, listen, she's already wearing the bracelet. I know you already issued her the bracelet. Let me so I, I talked my way in. I said, if if no one's gonna use this, I'm gonna use this, even so though you I in. shouldn't. Yeah, with with not only my bad leg and not only my the mouth. I mean, dude, like I was hurting so bad, actually. Uh and 
you went and did Wipeout. Totally did it. Had a had a blast. Now it wasn't exactly Wipeout, but let's just say it was similar, right? Like it's a yeah. it's floating on the water, and they it's weren't like trying an to hurt course. you. Uh, well, you know they're throwing, <laughs> stuff. they're throwing stuff at you. Like yeah, yeah, they're kind of. I mean, they're not trying to hurt you, but they're trying to knock you off and stuff. And and I we had done it, and so what's fun is you get to keep doing it. So like, if you can get to the end, you literally can yeah. jump off, swim go all the way back to the beginning and like do it again. Cause you have as much as you can do in an hour. And how many times did you do it, Eric? Four times. You did it four times in an hour. I, I made, I did it liar. four times That's in an hour. Liar. No, I did. I did it four times an hour. I, I was actually really, I was actually really good at it. They had one where you kind of had to climb up a wall that went sideways. Um, so you had to run really fast on this like plastic to kind of, uh, centrifugal it. force and like kind of run around and uh-huh. both my kids tried it fell fell in uh, <laughs> the boy who was there tried it fell in and i'm like i think you guys are going not you're not going high enough up on the wall i think if i go high you know so i got a good running start and i did it and i had really good traction and i made it all the way to the other side and they're all you know there's a bunch of kids in the water and they're like he made it he made it <laughs> that was pretty cool but no like, i did oh, it look the crippled guy he made it up there. But, <laughs> so when we get to like the end and, and it's almost time time's almost up i'm trying to complete this thing for a fourth time we're all having fun like yeah we're, we're looking back on the beach by the way and that girl's all freaking grumpy and i'm You're smiling her I'm like, I'm like, like ah. hey i'm all i'm having a blast you dumb broad um <laughs> but anyways trying to get through well all the teenage boys uh that had set that uh that that were doing it you know they're the, the, all last the teenage part of the- boys that were doing it okay yeah. uh, okay you see what kind of, no. uh, <laughs> you know, I, 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 your words differently. Sometimes. I was going to say, no. So all, all the teenage boys that were participating in the event uh, were, were like huddled at the last like gathering spot before you do the final um like run, right? Like you have okay. to run through some obstacles, the final run. And they're sitting there and they're trying to be all machismo and they're resting. They're doing what teenage boys do, right? Like, you know, they're just, they're oozing all the uh, testosterone, right? They're just like, uh, uh, they wouldn't let anyone pass. Like there's a big clog of like the girls, oh. the younger kids behind them. Cause the boys were kind of like, so you were the bowling over. ball and they were the bowling pins. Right. And my, even to the point where my daughters were and, and the boy that was with us, Danny, he goes, they go, uh, well, let, listen, let's just jump in. Let's swim to shore. It's almost over anyways. Like they're just not going to let us pass. Like it was to the point, you know, these kids were like trying to be intimidating, right? They're being little assholes there, but whatever. Well, here's the thing. I was really tired at this point because my legs killing me, my you mouth's four killing times. me. I well, I had done it three and a half, and I want to finish this fourth one. And I'm also of the thing like, hey, I paid for this, you sons of bitches. So they're all gonna. Everyone was jumping in the water and going around these boys and just gonna swim in. And I was so fed up, and I just walk up to where they are and I move my hands like Moses parting the pink, the 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 sea, the Dead Sea. Yeah, like- I, I put my hands and I do like the separating thing, and I go move. And they all kind of look at me like, yeah, I, I gave off the, I am not in the mood vibe. And they all yeah, like, like parted. They let me just part right through them. And I'm like staring at them as I'm going by. I'm like, get out of the way. Yeah. I mean, you freaking jackals. But yeah, I, and then I just ran the final obstacle, completed it. And I was like, sweet, dude. I did this four times. These teams. You got up boys. there. You're like, I'm American Ninja <laughs> Fat Warrior. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly. I'm a combination of Ninja Warrior and the biggest loser. Uh, <laughs> I got the two shows mixed up. But I'm happy to be here. And um, he's no. not smarter than a fifth grader. Kid. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, but yeah, it, listen, it was fun. It was great. But yeah, having That's family. Fun. The old, the old saying, uh, having f- family. What is it like? Having family visit is like having fish in your house. They all start to smell after two days or whatever the saying goes. Uh, I was. There's definitely very- a time limit on certain amount of people. My sister actually, it's kind of funny you say that. My sister just sent me her trip uh, itinerary. Yeah. <laughs> um, she's coming to our house in uh, August 2nd. <clears throat> Guess when she's leaving? Hopefully, like August 5th. No. Guess again. Eh, okay, August 2nd. You stay for four. You stay for five days. August 7th. 11. No, that's a long <laughs> way. Dude, that's nine days. So we just got over an eight day visit. All right. Ooh, and it was yeah. a little too much. And so, like, and by the way, like, four day visit i can handle it was good it would have been good but it was like those last few days when we ran out of stuff for them to do to eat and to eat and they eat all my food went <laughs> back to the point where we had to go shopping like again like while they were there <laughs> so ate all my food didn't participate made everything more difficult and then there were and then also i think they're kind of a bad influence on my kids too but that's yeah. a whole other thing but anyways. every kid is a bad influence on your kid except for mine yeah well my kid's a good kid that's not true your kids are bad influences on people too 
are they? No, not really. Okay. Actually. Anyway, yeah, they're actually, coming. My kids, my kids are actually pretty good. So. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the second to the eleventh, that's going to be fun. The good thing about my sister is, um, she comes and she goes into the pool and they have a good time and they hang out. But she also buys like a shit ton of floaties. But you can't take those back on the plane, you know. Yeah. So, so I get she, like I have a wagon that 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 folds up because she wanted to buy it when she was here last time. She can't take it on the plane. So I do get to keep some of the cool stuff she does buy and leave for the children and myself. But that nine days is going to be a lot. It, it is going to be a lot. Now, uh, hope hopefully though. You have enough. I I don't know. I've learned the, the importance to having like shield deflect your shield deflectors up and fully charged, and yeah. just having things that can like I was able to do a go do a work event and be like guys. I mean, by the way, it was a work event. I totally could have skipped, but I was like, hey everybody, I really got this work thing. I'm gonna be gone for like four hours. It's like you just really went to a bar, work. right? You didn't go to the work thing. Well, either. the work event was at a bar, so technically, I mean. Yes. Uh, the other, and then the other quick thing that happened uh, during this visit is for fa on Father's Day, uh, I went to this. Uh, they, we were going to this tiki event where they were selling like tiki home decor and like oh it was, it was fun. They were getting out free drinks and stuff. And I was like, guys, this is what I want to do for Father's Day. So we're driving, and it's been really hot here, man. The 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 it, for like the past three weeks, it's been like a hundred degrees, and it's just really hot here too. Yeah, and we were driving on the freeway. I was way ahead of Monique because I drive fast she does not and she calls and she goes uh i just had a blowout on the freeway i made it to the side of the road come come help and i so i spun around i go to go get her i i'm like okay i'm gonna attempt to try and change this tire on the freeway oh i get out and i walk up to it and then i mean semi trucks just flying by missing you by feet and i thought to myself i could do this <laughs> but but like i like Get dying in front of your kids while they're watching on father's day probably going to be pretty traumatic probably would mess them up they would need years of therapy so i said uh and it, it was so hot and i go listen you're gonna drive on this on this tire you're basically driving on the rim i said it's a it's a half a mile to the exit at least get to the exit off ramp there's way more room and yeah. i could change it over there so we're driving and cars are just not helping us out at all. Like we're driving on the shoulder, but there's not enough room and they're just flying by and honking and we have our hazards on and she's, we're going super slow. And anyways, finally get there, man. With the Lucky Land Slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. This is your captain speaking. Uh, we've got clear runway and the weather's fine, but we're just going to circle up here a while and uh, get lucky. No, no, nothing like that. It's just these cash prizes add up quick. So I suggest you sit back, keep your tray table upright, and start getting lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandslots.com. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. And everyone stays inside the air-conditioned car. While you oh. jacked it up and changed the tire? Yes. Shut and, the fuck up. Yes. And at one point, my wife, my lovely wife, my uh, wife, of, 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 of my wife, of my lovely wife of 21 years of marriage, uh, rolls down the window and says, Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> and then rolled back up the window into air conditioning. And, and dude, I was like drenched. Like I jumped in my pool with sweat. Like I was drenched because it's 103 degrees, but it was, it's also been really humid. So it's also like 62% humidity or whatever. So like I was just sweating and I thought I was going to get like heat stroke. Like I was, I was like starting to see stars. I'm like, get this tire off and you know, it's oh, funny is I've had that happen to me once. Now we, I was working at the X1139 uh, and me and my buddy, Steve, um, Steve Hay, rest in peace, um, love NASCAR, right? So we watch NASCAR all the time. So our, our, our promotions chick from the improv, Cindy, was there with Tommy Davidson. Oh, yeah. I we had the interview and everything. She goes outside. She starts backing up her car and she realizes, oh, shit, I got a flat tire. So she comes in and she goes, I, I, don't, I don't know how to do this. Chris, can you help? Because I'm a friend. I'm like, sure, D Steve, let's go. So we go out there and we're like, all right, let's do this. Let's see how fast we can do it. Like NASCAR, we're all goofing off. Tommy Davidson the whole time sat in the car while it was being jacked up. The tire getting taken off, switched back on, being jacked down the whole time on, on his phone, didn't even look at us at all. Wow. I'm like, come on, dude. I know you're skinny and all, but get the fuck out of the car. There, I think, see, I'm torn on this one because I, it was the side get out of the, the car. Yeah, guys get out of the car 100%. I kind of, and I, this isn't a sexist thing or whatever, but I car? kind of am more uh accepting of the of the girl staying in the car don't you have a didn't you have a second car there though 
yeah it was it was two uh i was i we were because uh we had too many you know our car couldn't fit yeah. all the people so we had to take two cars everywhere i would have had the girls get in that car j- drive off somewhere and then we'll bring this car to you in a second yeah i would have uh, got no, off the freeway the no, freeways are horrible when you're on the side of the freeway yeah 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 but we we got it changed but yeah the the uh all staring at me from the air-conditioned car as i jacked up the car and changed it uh was well um, you want me we want to feel any better the day i got my vasectomy i had to change a flat tire because oh jesus like i wasn't allowed to relax uh yeah. my wife we had somewhere to go to her family she's like just go and just sit there and do nothing i'm like okay so then we literally go around the block we have a flat tire i'm changing a tire in the middle of the road which is just like it's it's I could foresee my death. Like I was looking at this going, you know, I could totally see this being the way I die. Like this is a legitimate, like I could die doing this. Uh, You're just hoping it's an Amazon truck or, or, or like a yes yes truck. That way you get a bigger settlement for your your family. So that way my wife's next husband is living the life of luxury uh, Uh because she'll have all that money. Um, Hey man, you won't be able to do it four times in an hour. I bet though. Oh, you damn straight. Uh, (laughs) He, uh, so I, uh, this kind of ties together. So because family was in town and uh, I was not able to watch uh, catch up on Obi-Wan. Yes, so I've only aren't. watched the first episode. And the reason I couldn't watch it is they find Star Wars dumb, Marvel dumb, and no one was interested. And it was one of those ones where it's like, we couldn't as the four of us, uh, leckies couldn't say okay you guys all go to the other room we're gonna watch this you know it wasn't that kind of an environment so we just went okay we're not gonna watch the stranger things that my kids are all upset because we haven't oh. caught up on uh we well we, we we've watched episodes but we're like we're behind right and yeah. we haven't watched that we haven't watched obi-wan we haven't um Dude, i still haven't even out. started i still haven't even started the boys new season i haven't oh God, that's like, really yeah we're really like way behind um and so they just left. And so we're excitedly uh, last night. I had a thing, so we couldn't do anything last night. So tonight's like the first night where we're like, are you the only one home or are they everybody home? Everyone's home. Cause everyone's out of school. Monique works for the school. So yeah, everyone's home, which makes just it really say, hard to work from home, by the way. Like it also makes it very hard to walk around naked. It does, which is how I work from home. <laughs> you, uh, you're home alone. I was going to ask you. Right? <laughs> as soon as they left, did you just drop trow and start walking? Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I mean, now I have to like keep pants on and stuff. That's what, what I do when I nonsense? get to a hotel room with my wife. I totally just take my pants off. And I sit yeah. on the- <laughs> <laughs> well, so yeah, we're excited. And then of course, what happens when I say, okay, guys, this is what I was announcing last night. All right, guys, tomorrow's the day. We're going to catch up. We're going to, our goal is we're going to watch at least one Obi-Wan and one Stranger Things tomorrow. Like, and then we'll, we'll, on Saturday, we'll do the same thing. We'll watch one and one. Like, this is how we're going to catch up and stuff like that. And the bulb burns out on my TV projector. (laughs) So I had to order another one. Luckily, Amazon had it on one day. So it should arrive today, but it'll probably arrive at 9 p.m. at night. But if not, hold on, hold on. How much did that cost you? Because I know how much those bulbs can cost. I just have so this is my second time having to buy one. When we first moved in, I bought one and it was 115 for the bulb. Yeah. But Amazon had the bulb for $54, which I'm wondering if it's going to work. <laughs> like anytime something's that much of a discount, I'm like, am I just buying the thing that's not going to work? But I paid for the $54 one from Amazon. It's supposed to get delivered today. But I told them, I said, guys, don't worry about it. If we'll pull one of the other TVs out from the other room and we'll set that up in the living room and we'll just watch that for the first, you know, you we'll can set it on the shelf, can you? Well, yeah, but we'll, we'll also we'll be. Well, yeah, fine. yeah, just watch it on the TV. That's all you got to do. Yeah, yeah, we'll be fine. But I just thought it was funny, like uh, the first night that problems. we announced it, the bulb. Uh, yeah, first world problems. Uh, but anyway, so I, I can't talk Obi Wan because I'm uh, I'm really bummed, but I'm behind on Dude. it. Dude, oh, I cried. Oh, I'm so excited because everyone that I, I'm like trying to avoid. You can't go online. You can't yeah, go online exactly. at all. Uh, I set filters uh, like so it blocked like certain really? words. Like I yeah, you, I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to hear anything. So yeah, you don't need to. Can't can't talk about that. You said you still haven't seen Top Gun, but no. I see that we did see this. Uh, 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 <laughs> we did see a movie uh, in conjunction with each other. There happens to be one movie that we share in common that we for some reason decided to put on, and that would be Chip and Dale Rescue Rangers. Rescue Rangers. Yeah. Now, now, if you haven't seen the movie, we're going to spoil it a little bit, but not a ton. Yeah. Um, this is like the unofficial sequel to Roger Rabbit. It was so Roger Rabbit. <laughs> it was like they took, you know what it felt like? Like, you know how when Disney remade the Jungle Book or yeah. you know, turned it into a live action? It felt like they were like, okay, well, let's redo Roger Rabbit, but we'll do it with a different story. A new, yes. or, you know, a new characters. Or, or and, and how they did it where it was like, 
after their career of the Rescue Rangers uh, television show was a was debunked one of them did well the other one didn't and they like got their plastic surgery was to get like th- uh pixar instead of just being which by the way i thought was pretty funny i actually so thought that smart. that was a that was a pretty smart line yeah. it's so smart like the movie it, it it's it's like it's stupid but better than you think it's going to be when you heard they were doing chip and dale yeah i didn't like the series as a cartoon i never really watched it i was more of a ducktales kid Woo-hoo. um and I didn't really like the DuckTales series, the new one that came Ooh. out. But this movie Say Duck is Tales dope. Again. And I didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. Like, dude, I I, I mean, I watch it just because, uh, you know, when I, you and I were kids, it's not like we had a lot of options. So, yeah, I watched it because it was like five things on TV to watch. So I watched it. But, yeah, I was much more of a DuckTales woohoo fan. Um, but. I was like, okay, this is gonna be so stupid, but we, the family were arguing about what to put on for a movie. Uh-huh. And it was like, what is something that we can all agree with? I wanted to watch something else. There was, and then I was like, listen, if we put on the Chippendale movie, will everyone sit here, stay off their phones and watch this? Yep. And they, all, they all nodded yes. I'm like, fine, that's what we're gonna watch then. This is our family movie night, Chippendale. And we watched it and at the end we were all like, huh, you know, I don't need to see it again, but it was still fun and it was funny. And I thought, Shit, that was better than I thought it would be. It was like it was like Roger Rabbit and uh, 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 Re- Ralph Breaks the Internet and Ready Player One was all yeah. kind of mashed together. Yep. With the animation in real life and all the all the difference. I mean, it, when you Sonic, you're, the Sonic with the real teeth. Yeah. And making fun of that. That was pretty funny. The, the ugly Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The yeah. fact that like that when they get there, they're like, all right grab some clothes we gotta go and he turns around it's like the indiana jones memorial museum or something yeah <laughs> like, it was just really done very smart and um i i want to watch it again at least one more time because i want to try to catch more of those little uh the little things that just fly by like different shout yeah, and you're and you're right it was exactly it, it was very similar to a uh, ralph breaks the internet kind of a thing there there was just all these references yeah uh, that i thought were pretty funny and pretty enjoyable but like i said when you watch a movie especially if you're an adult watching kind of a kid's theme movie if at the end of it you're like huh well that was pretty decent like honestly that means that the the movie makers did the job they they yeah. they like i watched a movie that was you know, stupid. It's supposed to be a stupid movie. It's a stupid comedy movie that was about cartoon chipmunks. And at the end, I was like, "Oh yeah, that was that was fine. I was I totally enjoyed that. That was but totally they took, fine." They took that leap a lot, like the Spider Verse did with that different type of animation. Yep. They took that leap with uh, combining real and fake, and they even have the cats in there and like cars. I mean, everything is in this. It's just the way that they mashed it together. It was just well, well done. I How really- do you think they got the rights to do ugly Sonic and kind of mock it and make fun of it? That's what I like. That was all because the whole movie, they were mocking it. I cannot oh, believe yeah. how often that reference came up. I bet and they I was probably- like, how did they get the rights to just mock Sonic like that? They, they paid Sega a shit ton of money and they just had a Sonic movie come out. So it's not like it's going to hurt them at all. Yeah, I guess that's true. But yeah, no, that was dope. I mean, Seth Seth Rogen's in it. John Mulaney and Andy Samberg are the voices yeah. of Chip and Dale. Yeah, that, I mean, they were funny. They were really good at it. And it's their voices. It's not like they were like chipmatized or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. It was pretty uh, dope. All right. So, hey, quickly, before we get out of here, um, I would like to do an SMRT. I am too smart. I am too smart. SMRT. I mean, S-M-A-R-T. All right, I got one that would well, that would piss you off if it happened to you, and I got one of a, a, a like a good story uh, because a criminal was was dumb and 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 it helped a woman out who was getting screwed over. I'm gonna start with the one that would really piss you off if this happened to you, Chris. Okay, like this should anger you, like really really anger you. Okay, this uh, is up in your neck of the woods in Spokane, Washington. Okay. Um. Uh. This the headline is a nightmare. Family living without a roof after theirs was removed by a contractor that they never hired. Wait, what? A local family's been living without a roof for 20 days after theirs was removed by a contractor they never hired. Jessica Hotvet uh, never thought she'd come home to not having a roof. Quote, this is a nightmare. Worst thing I could have imagined. Uh, My daughter came home from school and find that people were removing the roof on our house. The house is now covered with blue tarps with no explanation except for a letter left by the contractor, which says there was a miscommunication and they were sent to the wrong address. And she says they have taken no blame for it. It was a mistake, a very costly mistake, and it should have been fixed. 
It should have been fixed right away. 20 days later has not been fixed. You want to know why? Because there's been rainstorms every day. Ah! And so they can't do it. So this poor family (laughs) comes home. Their roof is gone because the contractors removed the roof of the wrong house. Then they just covered it in tarps and it's 20 days later and they do not have a roof and it's been raining. Yeah, they look like they live in the woods, too. I'm looking at a picture. Um, <laughs> those tarps are really big. Those yeah. are big-ass tarps. Uh, I would, uh, yeah, I it's would like probably... the entire roof. The entire <laughs> roof is a freaking tarp. Like two it's... parts of a roof, too. It's not just like one A-frame building. There's another part of an A-frame on the other side of it, too. But if I would have killed the contractor, I would have... Dude, I would have... Oh, my God. I would have went down and burned down their fucking business. That's what yeah, I would Or taken off their roof, right? Like, yeah. hire yeah. hire another company to take off their roof while they're gone. Like, oh, sorry, wrong address. It says they're worried about the five kids' health and how they'll go on living without a roof. That they, uh, We want it to blah, blah, blah. Um, it says it's very stressful, mainly affecting the kids' rooms. The kids don't want to sleep up there because of the smell, and they're worried about just having a tarp over their heads. Yep. And they're saying they're asking if anyone has advice on what to do because they've contacted the Washington Attorney General as what well is the business, a better business bureau and starting to meet with lawyers to find out about their next steps. But here's the problem. Uh, lawsuits and all that takes a long time to resolve yeah in the you meantime, just gotta fix your roof and then in the meantime you, know. you just want a freaking roof on your house and you're right like i would it, the, the i would have to be physically withheld from yes. going to exact my revenge on the person because you know your home is your castle like that's as uh, you know you, you you're providing that for your family so nobody someone was home just they, takes the cap off nobody was home when they were taking it off and they didn't yeah, everyone's the at home work or anything see that's the thing is you shouldn't there's you shouldn't be able to go to a house and just start doing that without having a homeowner there but yeah. here's the funny part. Um, they're they're going to have to pay to get it fixed for one. And like you said, it's going to take forever yep. in court systems. They used to have five kids. Yep. Wow. That's why they can't afford it. Right. Because <laughs> kids are the devil. Uh, anyway, so moving on from that story. So that's we all not, agree that we would totally just like. I would probably have person. called. I'd probably uh, after going down there and getting physically withheld. I would probably have called my aunt who uh, rides a motorcycle in Arizona. That's all I'm going to say. Mm. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I would, um, yeah, I would have done something like removed their roof uh, or something like that. And what's going to wind up having to happen. They're going to have to pay to get the roof fixed out of pocket. It's like 10 and grand. Sue to get that money replenished plus whatever damage it caused. And, and like, and by the way, you could probably probably get the whole house now. Cause you can say, Hey, the, the roof was off for so long. It damaged the inside. Now yeah, we the need A-frame. To, yeah. Now we can need a complete remodel. Anyways, it's from, from going from a really st- a story that should get your blood boiling as that one did to one that is good news. Oh. Uh, now a kidnapping is uh, a bad thing. And everyone, you know, if, if you're ever kidnapped, you know, that's how you're pray- starting the story. Pray, pray that you get let go, right? <laughs> Listen, I've kidnapped many people and I at least provide wa- fresh water and food in the trunk of my car. So uh, I'm not a monster. But anyway, is the reason they put those, uh, those glow in the dark handles inside the trunk for people to open it up. Uh, I will tell you, and this is, <laughs> I, this is not a joke. This is a hundred percent true. I am the reason that the Taco Bell in Whittier, California has, um, uh, plexiglass casing around their drive through where they have to deliver your food. Like they put it in a, in a, like a thing and then, yeah, they like push it out and your put your food comes out. Like you don't actually have direct contact with. What did you do? Eating. I will talk about it on another podcast. Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> like, uh, your, let's just say that I, I, I did a thing and plexiglass was put up and it was been up there for the last 15 years or more. So, uh, but yeah, uh, anyways, okay. Back to this headline. Cause this is, I, tr- t- uh, a 24 year old woman used Grubhub to contact oh. police while she was being held hostage in the Bronx, New York over the weekend, according to criminal reports, an unidentified woman who agreed to meet up with a man that she had been chatting with on a dating app was assaulted and held captive by the man. According to the complaint, the man took the woman's phone away, but she was able to retrieve it when she asked the man if she could order food. So think about it. She's sitting there. He's holding her captive. She goes, I got to eat. You know, you got to give me something to eat. Mm -hmm. And she goes, order something, order something, right? He doesn't want her to call. So he says, use the app on the phone. It says a copy of the order placed on Grubhub, a food delivery service, shows that in the notes comments section, she wrote, Please call the police and don't make it obvious. When the man opened the door expecting the food delivery, he was met by officers from the New York Police Department, according to the complaint, and was charged with assault 
attempt uh, a kidnapping. Uh, and it, 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 this is also, uh, he's had a few strikes on him. So I think good news is they, they're anticipating him going to jail for a long time. That's gnarly. I've, I've heard of that story one time before here in Southern California. It happened where a chick was being pseudo held hostage. She ordered food, but in the comments, it was like, it was like Pizza Hut or something. It said, uh, call police need help or something like that. Something simple that they put yeah. the note down. It was like kids that did it too, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and now here's my question. So the guy opens the door, freeze. It's the police handcuff, handcuff, gunpoint, bring them out. Yay. Cut, bring cut the ropes out. off. Yeah. Bring, uh, put, you know, uh, take the, the cuffs or the rope that she's tied up off. Give her a hug. Say you're going to be okay. Okay. My question is, well, did you bring the food? Yeah. I was going to say the same thing. What's like, <laughs> like, by the way, not only, not only did they bring the food, if they did knowing Grubhub, it would have been a messed up order anyways. So if you put the notes in the comment section on Grubhub, please call the police. I'm being held hostage. Uh, uh, Grubhub would show up with like, uh, your landscape guy and go, you wanted landscaping, right? <laughs> no, I needed the police. Damn it. God, you guys mess up everything. Oh, that's funny. I mean, she wasn't going to get to eat it anyway. They were going to arrest the guy and they were going to take her in to get questioning and stuff. So she wasn't going to get any food anytime soon. Yeah, but don't you think, I mean, honestly, even if after a traumatic experience like that, as they're taking you away going, it's going to be okay, Chris, it's going to be okay. And you're like, um, where's my burrito? Yeah. Where'd my tacos go? Guys, I, I specifically said a burrito. I mean, I ordered the food plus I did put it in the notes, but I mean, I also, I ordered the food. But also, you, and then she's looking over, and there's a cop over there with a burrito. <laughs> or wait a minute, do you think the kidnapper was like, yeah, you know what? Uh, I actually want that. Do, are they doing those uh, Mexican pizzas like Taco Bell? You, you know, <laughs> one, throw one of those on their form. Like, do you think that he was like telling her an order to go yes. ahead and place? Yes, a hundred percent. He was and like, he <laughs> it was his last meal, but he didn't get it. <laughs> That's what they should do if they ever have to put this guy to to death. They, his last meal should be whatever it is he ordered was order on grubhub <laughs> see that's how they should do that stuff they should be more funny about that don't let them get what Wait, they want feed them like a, feed them a, the foot of the guy that they killed yes that, that's actually a great idea like if you're on death row and you get your final thing order a pizza and just have it delivered and like the pizza guy has to come in while you're, <laughs> while you're strapped to the chair like you're strapped to the chair uh you ordered pepperoni and uh, jalapeno no dude i wanted sausage guys this execution is gonna have to wait until they can yeah. get this order right jeez that stupid grubhub man they can never get it right they never they brought the it right. it's funny too because the, i'm looking at the story that's on some website and the picture they have is a grubhub and doordash bags together why Anyway, that's stupid. Yeah. That's Anyways, hilarious. I'm going to well, try that one time. I'm going to order a pizza and be like, remember the old movie with Patrick Dempsey where if you ordered uh, extra anchovies, it was like you were calling a hooker? Oh, for sex. Yeah, that was Julia Roberts. That was her first uh, big movie, I think. Yeah, it was called like Lover Boy or something. Uh, Mystic Pizza? Lover Boy. Oh, okay. But uh, but if you, no, no, it was Lover Boy, yeah, with, uh, with Patrick Dempsey. But no, um. It was like extra anchovies and then he'd show up and then he'd be like having sex with you. Uh, but what if you put in the comments like, yeah, order pizza and I would love a, I don't know, put something explicit in there. Like I want to, yeah. I want a handy or something. And Try then out. Like, say, <laughs> order, order from GovHub, you know, burrito, tostada, three taquitos, uh, Fanta, blah, blah, blah. And then in the comments, just go, my wife and I are needing a third for our threesome. Yeah. Uh, so something like that. Yeah. So early. And just to see how like it's. Nonchalant. Yeah. And if they show up and they're like, so about the comments or do they just ignore it or, you know, yeah. I, mean? <laughs> I, I think I have, uh, I think we're ordering from Grubhub tonight. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, that is it for us for this week. Uh, by the way, be on the lookout for a brand new season of listen to this, which should be debuting uh, any, any, any time now, really excited about this new season. I think Next every week. season gets better and better and really proud of this next season. And also plus one stories, which are super awesome. Uh, you're going to be starting that up again, right? It, it came back this week, actually. This week? With oh, see, I haven't seen it. Okay. Jimbo Smith. And then uh, next week is actually last week was Jimbo. This week was Luis Villasenor, where he um, got to be on stage uh, as a hype man for Pitbull and didn't have any idea what was going on. Mr. Worldwide. Um, all right, buddy. Well, listen, uh, everything's uh, awesome here in Texas, except for the heat. Uh, you stay cool out there in California, and we will talk next week. All right, man. Catch you later. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club. Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. 
That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Full work limited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Chumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Voidware prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details.